everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we're going through the 2021 OWASP Top 10 Security Risks. And at number eight is Software and Data Integrity Failures. So this is a new category for the 2021 list, and it focuses on making assumptions related to software updates and critical data, CICD, you know, continuous pipelines without verifying the integrity of that software, right? And so an example of this may be where an application relies on like plugins or libraries or those kinds of things from untrusted sources or repositories or CDNs, those types of situations, right? So like an insecure CI/CD pipeline can introduce the potential for unauthorized access and malicious code and those kinds of things. So it's not a good thing. And in fact, a lot of applications now um, include auto update functionality and these updates are downloaded without sufficient uh, integrity verification. So, you know, if you're downloading something without checking the, uh, the integrity of that download, then that's a problem, right? And so attackers could come in and could potentially upload their own updates, and then those updates could be distributed and run on all these different installations. So that's not good, right? So maybe a couple of scenarios, I'll just draw out a couple of different scenarios here on how this problem could present itself. So let's say you're at home and you've got, you know, a, a home router right here that's, uh, you know, doing its, doing its thing, giving you, um, you know, different, uh, you know, different wireless access, right? So you've got your computers and all that. Well, the router itself um, has firmware on it. And so I'm just going to put firmware on this. And that firmware um, does not, you know, verify updates, uh, you know, via signed firmware or the router does not. Uh, verify updates via signed firmware, right? And so this unsigned firmware could be a problem um, where attackers could come in and uh, you know manipulate this firmware because it's it's not signed. So now if you have an update to the firmware on your home router, then that could be an attacker's version of the firmware update, right? Um, I'm just going to generally put uh, you know IoT devices, so the Internet of Things. Um, you know, there's there's uh, whether it's a a TV or a you know refrigerator or your whatever right just everything's connected to the internet uh, and a lot of these a lot of these devices just don't have the capability uh, to or they or they don't I should say they don't update their firmware and their software uh, via these you know um, verified sources right so just that whole that whole scenario when these things you know download then that could be a problem all right so another one I'll just put a line right here another one is let's say you have, um, you know, this, uh, this source of, uh, you know, of monitoring, let's say. All right, so you have this monitoring software. Uh, so I'll just put, you know, monitor, monitor software that is then installed on a variety of different endpoints out here, right? And then, you know, this, this source of truth, if you will, or this place of, of uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the source that, that pushes out the monitoring software to all these end devices, if that thing is, uh, is compromised, then that presents a big problem. And that's, that's precisely what happened with this solar winds attack. So I'll just put solar, solar winds, right? There was a solar winds attack several months ago. And effectively what happened was solar winds, it's this monitoring software that, you know, thousands of organizations use all over the world. And the SolarWinds process of, you know, updating itself was itself, um, you know, targeted. And these, these uh, attackers came in and they infiltrated the update process that SolarWinds had. So as SolarWinds is pushing out, you know, their different software uh, updates and patches and all that, then all of that gets propagated out to all these different end devices and organizations and all that. And so the whole thing gets, gets compromised, right? It's... Um, yeah, it's, it's just not a good situation. Um, and in fact, one of these end organizations, I talked about this in, a, in another video, uh, was an organization called FireEye, right? And so because FireEye ultimately is downloading this compromised update software, then they themselves were compromised. And then attackers were able to get into FireEye through this SolarWinds, you know, compromised process. And then FireEye had a bunch of their red team attack, you know, type um, tools and all that stolen. And it was just not a good thing at all, right? So there's all these different organizations. And so this, this, uh, this update process, the integrity of this update process was compromised. And that's the, 
that's the you know the situation that we're dealing with here. Uh, you know, when you talk about the you know this this software integrity, right? So how do you how do you prevent all of this stuff, right? What are what are some things you can think about? So one thing you can use or, or think about or you can do is use digital signatures or si or similar kind of mechanisms to verify the software um, or the data that you have is from the expected source, right? So you can check like a you know like a checksum or a hash algorithm that type of thing, right? Use those uh, digital signatures. Also. Um, you, can, you need to make sure that the, that the libraries and dependencies are consuming trusted repositories. So that's another thing you can think about. Uh, there's also a couple of things you can do that OWASP has. I'll, I'll mention this in another video as well. There's a thing called dependency check that, uh, that OWASP has. So I'll just put OWASP out here. So it's the OWASP dependency check. And so you can use that um, to ensure that your software supply chain um, is, you know, is verified, right? That you have these verified components uh, there's another one, by the way, OWASP Cyclone DX is another tool that you can use to verify that your components are good. Uh, so you can run different tools to make sure that you're not, you know, propagating, um, you know, the uh, tools or software that has been compromised, right? Um, also, you can make sure that there's a review process for code and configuration changes uh, within your organization. So make sure that that process is in place. And then also, the last thing I'll mention is your CI/CD pipeline. So you, again, you know, this whole continuous deployment type world that we live in. I mean, you're pushing code all the time, right? And so if that, if that whole process becomes compromised, then it's just a really bad thing. So make sure that your CI/CD pipeline has proper segregation, has proper configuration and access control built in to ensure the integrity of the code uh, that flows through those processes. So those are a few things you can keep in mind to make sure that you keep your software you know, integrity in check. So thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. Hey, if you like this thing, you can click up here on our Dev Central logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.